Welcome to this rink demo presented by Bauer. I'm Kevin Weeks, joined along with our good colleague and friend, Game 7 hero, Stanley Cup champ, and Mike Rupp. We're going to talk about playing the puck from a goalie perspective, but since we're fortunate enough to be joined by Rupper, you're going to give us some of your insights, Rupper, and expertise on what happens when goalies play the puck. So goalies generally don't handle the puck that much. Some of them are really good at it, mm. some of them not so much. So you want to, regardless of the skill level of this goaltender, you want to pressure that goalie. So we're going to show you a little bit of that too, how you defend it. And then maybe on the same side, we're going to talk about how on, on the same, being on the same team as the goalie, how to be available and make yourself available for him. Absolutely. Okay, let's take a look at Freddie Anderson of the Toronto Maple Leafs, one of the best in the business. Now, this is on the road at the Shark Tank, Rupper. Watch the way Freddie Anderson lost this one up to Mitch Marner. This was off of a dumping. Brent Burns, North Trophy winner, dumps this in on Freddie Anderson. Uh-uh. Freddie goes long distance up to Marner for the goal. That's what I love too, is you've got Marner, and I believe that's Hyman on the other side. And if, if, if Freddie Anderson can't play the puck very well, they're not going to react the way they did. Do you want to, let's, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's break what it ends in. up happening here, the puck comes in here to Freddie Anderson. I'm going to disappear from your screen here in a second, because this is way up ice. Mitch Marner, instead of coming back, Mitch Marner, Zach Hyman, instead of coming back in the zone and, and setting up and helping out, they're confident that Freddie Anderson has some time. So let's give Freddie a chance to make an offensive play. So what they end up doing is they're coming back towards their defensive zone, but then they realize he's got some time. You see Mitch Marner backpedaling. I'm out of the picture here. I'm going all the way down on the other side of the red line, and this allows Freddie Anderson to sky one out. Yeah, Freddie does this. This is Freddie's bread and butter. So Freddie catches it. He recognizes his heads up. He's got a great presence of mind, and he just sends that the length of the rink down to Mitch Marner to the far offensive blue line. Mitch Marner goes in, instant offense. But what I love about this, Rupper, your point makes a lot of sense, is for you as a forward, you recognize that you're playing with Freddie, who has the strong suit of playing the puck. Not dissimilar to what you had in playing with Marty Brodeur. Yeah, and, and the inter interesting thing, too, is you never want, as an opposing team, you don't want to be uh, one guy, one pass to beat more than one player. So what I mean by that is if there's a defenseman with the puck and he's coming out of the zone and he makes one pass, one pass can't catch two forwards. Because now you start playing the numbers against you. So what this does, by those guys bailing and going out, Freddie Anderson skies that one, You're, that one pass is catching three forwards of the San Jose Sharks, which is incredible because do the math right there, there's only two left. Exactly. So if your three forwards are on the other side, you're going to get a three on two. They make, they make best of it and they score a big goal. Let's do it one more time. Just pass me one of those pucks, please. So listen, for a lot of you girls and boys, a lot of you goalies, you adult rec men and women that play adult rec hockey, it's important as goalies to be watching because one thing we didn't mention, which we will now, is Freddie Anderson had the presence of mind to realize that there was a line change for the San Jose Sharks as well. So as goalies, yes, you're primarily, and our primary job is to stop the puck, but you've got to be paying attention, have situation awareness, situational awareness, seeing what's going on, reading the game clock. That's Mitch Marner now. Mitch Marner, the puck comes back to Freddie. Mitch Marner's all the way down the rink. He continues, he doesn't even begin to come back as per upper. He knows Freddie's got it. He knows Freddie can shoot it. And Freddie Anderson aptly recognized the play and just sends that the length of the rink. Mitch Marner goes in, automatic goal. So that's our first scenario. We're going to take a look at the second one now. Keith Kincaid plays it fairly well, but let's go to the tape on this one, Rupper. We're going to show the fans what happened. Deep bleh, in the third period. Yeah. And I know what Keith Kincaid was thinking. I've been there many times. You're like, oh, wide open net. I might be able to get myself one here. And he doesn't get under this one. You can tell he flubs it. I know that feeling. He was able to bail himself out. His teammates help him. That look says it all. But maybe you could take us through that one from a player perspective. Well, I, I think on this one, it's a little bit different because you don't have, in that case, the Flyers are not right on top of them right here. So generally speaking, if the goalie's coming out and he's playing the puck, your job is don't guess. Don't anticipate where he's going. So if Kevin is the goalie, he comes out, plays the puck, and I'm forechecking in here. I'm not going to try to play a guessing game. I'm not going to try to wave my stick around and guess where he's going to go with this. That's not my job. My job is to get there as quick as I can because in general terms, he doesn't handle the puck as much as most of the other guys on the ice because he's not, a, you know, he's not a, a skater. He doesn't right. handle it in that, in that aspect. So I'm skating at him as hard as I can, stick on puck, and just force him. And in this case, Keith Kincaid tries to make a quick play, but you also have flyer players clog in the middle of the ice. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to let him do what Freddie Anderson did or use the middle of the ice. So make him just shovel it to the wall, get it out of his hand, force him. Um, but he, he got a gift on that one. He and, did. And that's why I always, I always thought, too, when you had goalies come out and play it, 
lock the middle of the ice. As a centerman, just stay in the middle of the ice because if he's going to dare to throw one cross ice or down the middle, you pick that off, you're in a great spot to score. And one thing for your goalies, if you're trying to launch it, you always have to make sure that you're getting underneath the puck. That's one thing that Keith Kincaid didn't do on that rare miscue. He tried to go direct, and he ended up flubbing it. It happens to all of us. Rupper, if you can get me one more puck, please. But you always want to make sure that you get underneath that puck and get some loft on it. That's the key. Easier said than done from our studios here than it would be up the road at the Prudential Center. But when I say get under it, you want to be able to get under that puck and then sky it forward. So that's just more the ideal play for Keith Kincaid. As I said, we've all been there. We've all made that mistake. But two very distinct examples, Rupper, of playing the puck for goalies. Freddie Anderson, one of the best in the business at playing it. Keith Kincaid, a rare miscue by him. And Rupper giving you his insights on what teammates and opposing players are look for when goalies go to play the puck. Back to you guys. Great stuff. Taking us inside. The game is a gift. Visit your local retailer or Bauer.com for great holiday hockey gifts.